Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 3, Lesson 9, Introduction to Components. In this lesson, we'll explain components and common uses, and then we'll create a flashlight component. There's one thing that I want to fix very quickly in the player controller, and I'll show you what it is. If I look all the way down, eventually the controller will get messed up, and then I can't correct it. We can fix this here in our look up event where we're adding from the old rotation to get a new rotation. Let's drag off here and type clamp and choose clamp float. And for the minimum, we're gonna set it to minus 80. And for the maximum, we're gonna set it to 80. What a clamp does is it sets the high and low limit that we can set this to. So it will stop at minus 80 when we're looking down and positive 80 when we're looking up. Now I can't get that error anymore. Now, we've been using components so far on all of our actors. The capsule component, arrow, mesh, spring arm, camera, and even the movement are all components that are pre-built into Unreal Engine. But Unreal Engine also allows us the ability to set up our own components. And these components are broken up into two basic categories. An actor component is used for abstract behavior that does not require a physical transform. Some common uses for an actor component are to create an inventory system, to create skills for a character, or to create a health component to keep track of an actor's health. A scene component is a location-based behavior that does not require a geometric representation. Examples of this are the camera and spring arm components that we've already used, and there are others as well. Let's create our flashlight component for our character. I want to set up a flashlight on my character and I want it to point wherever I look. So I'm actually going to attach it to the camera. With the camera selected, I'm going to add a spotlight. And we'll call this flashlight. Here in our viewport, we can see what the light size is going to be. And I think that's a little bit too big. So I'm going to bring it down to around 25. And then I'll set the inner angle as well to about 20. Now, wherever I look, I'll be shining a light and we can see that it's reflecting some shadows of my character. We can fix this by just bringing it forward a bit and try again. I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing we want to do is create our component that will allow us to control this flashlight. Here in my blueprints folder, I'm going to right click and say, create blueprint class. I'm going to select actor component we'll call this BP flashlight. And we need a few things. Let's start by creating two variables. The first one is going to be an integer and it's going to be called current power. We'll create another integer and this is going to be called full power. Let's compile and set full power 100 and then compile again. Now we need to create two functions. The first function is going to be called turn flashlight on. And the second one will be called turn flashlight off. And we want to use these functions to control the flashlight that our character has. So let's get a reference to that right on the begin play. We can get player character and cast this to BP player character. And then we can get flashlight and save this as a variable. This will allow us to control the flashlight whenever we need to. And let's test this out by going to turn flashlight on, get flashlight and set visibility. And we want the visibility to be checked. And we can do the same thing by copying this and putting this in flashlight off and then turning off the visibility. Now we need a control to be able to turn on and off the flashlight. And I'm gonna choose F. So let's go to our project settings and inputs and set up a new action mapping. And this is just gonna be called flashlight. And we'll assign it to F. Now in our player controller, we can set up our action event, get our player character, and the last thing we need to do is add the, the flashlight component to our character.
let's get our flashlight event and then we'll get our player character reference, get the flashlight. And for this one, we want BP flashlight, not the light itself. And we'll get turn flashlight on. And for now, we'll hook up released to turn flashlight off. This means we'll need to hold the F key to show the flashlight, but we're gonna use this just for testing for now. Let's compile and press play. And when I hold the F key, the flashlight turns on. And when I release it, the flashlight turns off. This is just a way to test that the functionality is working for now. Let's go back to our BP flashlight, create another new variable called is flashlight on. And this is going to be a Boolean in our turn flashlight off. Let's set this to false. And in our turn flashlight on, let's set this to true. Now here in our controller, we can get that value and do a branch that checks if it's on when we press the flashlight. And this is how we want it. When we press the flashlight button, it's gonna check, is the flashlight on? If it is on, we're gonna get true and we'll turn it off. If it's false and the flashlight is off, we'll turn it on. Let's test this. By default, the flashlight will be on if I press F, the flashlight turns off. And if I press it again, the flashlight will turn back on again. Now we need to set up the functionality where when the flashlight is on, it slowly drains over time. And for this, we can use a timer. Let's set up a new function in our BP flashlight called drain power. And in here, we want to get the current power and we want to subtract one and then we'll set this to our new power value. And then from here, we'll check if it's still greater than zero. If it is, we'll do nothing. And if it's not greater than zero, we can turn flashlight off. We also need in the begin play to set our current power equal to full power. So let's set current power to full power. And this can actually be made into a function called set full power. So now that we have our drain power function set up, we can start a timer whenever the flashlight turns on. So here, let's set a timer by function name. And our function name is going to be drain power. And remember, this is case sensitive. So it needs to exactly match the name of your function. And we'll set the time to 0.2, which means it'll decrement five every second and set it to looping. We can also make this into a variable called drain speed. And just for testing purposes, I want to set this to a much higher value. In our drain power function, let's get a print string and we'll print out the value of current power just for some testing. And we can see when it gets to zero, it turns off and the timer is still clicking down, which means we also need to clear that timer when the power turns off. So here in turn flashlight off, let's do a clear timer by function name, and that'll be drain power. Now when the flashlight turns off, we want to set another function to fill the power back up. Let's do a new function called fill flashlight power. And in this one, we want to get that current power again. This time we want to add, and let's say we want the flashlight to fill twice as fast. So we'll put two here and then we'll set this to the current power. Then we'll check, is it greater than or equal to full power? And if it is, all we want to do is clear timer for fill flashlight power. And just for testing purposes, let's also put a print string here so we can see what the power level is at. Now here in turn flashlight off, let's do a set timer, fill flashlight power. The timer can be the same and this needs to be looping. And one more thing, 
That way we don't have two competing of each other. On the turn flashlight on, let's clear that timer. And that way, when we turn the flashlight on, we will clear the fill flashlight power function and start the drain power function. In drain power, when we get to zero, we'll turn flashlight off, which means we'll clear the timer for drain power and set a new timer for fill flashlight power. And in fill flashlight power, if we get to full power, we'll turn off the timer for fill flashlight power. Let's compile this and just check everything's working. When I get to zero power, the flashlight should turn off and start charging automatically. And there we have it. And it should go all the way to 100 or whatever the full power is, and then clear. If I turn it off in the middle before it drains, it should also start to fill back up. And just to avoid weird behaviors, let's also clamp these values. So here, we're going to use a clamp integer. Where the minimum will be zero and the maximum will be full power. Let's do the same in drain power. Here, let's clamp again. Where the minimum is zero and the maximum is full power. And this will just avoid any strange behaviors. And that's it. We've created our flashlight component, which means we have a good basis for our project. In the last lesson for this week, we'll just go over a few steps for finishing up our level design before we move into week four.